Pine processionary has exerted ecological pressure on this forest for hundreds of years. You'd think that the species would be content to prosper in this huge Garden of Eden. But at the beginning of the 20th century, they suddenly began to march towards the north. Scientists would like to know where their forward march will end so that the contaminated zones may be marked out. Mathematician Christelle Robinet has put aside her algorithms and her computer data in order to lend a hand to Jérôme Rousselet and his team. They've been alerted to the presence of processionary nests just north of Orléans. This region until now showed no signs of infestation. We've just entered a zone that wasn't colonized last year, so we're definitely at the colonization front, meaning a zone where the population is small and a few pioneering individuals have settled, not without difficulty. Our goal will be to tag the exact location of this last nest. If we find it, we will explore another area a few miles from here, in the hope of finding a totally processionary-free zone. This is how we succeed in establishing the border between the colonized and the non-colonized zones. Then it'll be your turn to play around with some models. The front line is a tricky area for the pine processionary. There are few nests now, but if the conditions turn out to be favorable, new colonies will propagate. I think there's one here. Yes, yes, there's one. Let's check it out. A small one in the back, about mid-height. Okay, I see it. Okay, we've got that one. I'll beep it. Perfect. Now we need to see if there are any others nearby. Back at the laboratory, Christelle is transferring the GPS data recorded in the field. Here's the GPS location of the nest that we saw in the forest yesterday. Let's assume that the pine processionary has settled in this 5 by 5 mile square. Thanks to observations conducted all winter long, we'll be able to establish the limit of the northern colonization front. If we increase the scale, we see that the colonization front has been charted all the way from Brittany to Switzerland. This recent expansion, which is progressing quickly and unexpectedly, intrigues scientists. They are studying the adult processionary caterpillar and the different stages of colonization in the hopes of understanding what is taking place. The caterpillars have sunk into the ground. They have spent several weeks in this position and have secretly turned into moths. This is the imago, or the adult form of the pine processionary caterpillar. This moth only lives for one day, so all its energy must be devoted to fulfilling its destiny to reproduce. Processionary colonizes new lands by air, so the scientists are focusing on evaluating the species' flight capacity. They hope to deduce the amplitude and the speed of the spread. 
It's impossible to follow processionary moths in the wild and to get a feel for the way they spread out. We need to know more about the flight capacity of the males and, more importantly, the females. They decide where future populations will settle. We've constructed an experimental device that enables us to measure flight distances. This device is simply a rotating axis that we place an insect on. We can measure the amount of circles it makes, and then we convert that number into distance. Most of the time, the female is the first to tire. Her egg-filled abdomen weighs her down and limits her flight capacity. The male is more streamlined. The strong muscles in his highly developed thorax make him a powerful long-distance flyer. The gender ratio is relatively balanced. There are as many males as there are females. However, they don't roam at the same time. During the day, the males roam earlier. This means that when the males set out, there are few available females. Their flight capacity, an average of six to nine miles, is great enough to allow them to search the entire zone for the rare female. Through this behavior, they disperse and ensure a genetic mix on a local scale. The male takes off on his first and final night flight. One to two hours later, it's time for the females to roam. They deploy their reproductive organs and release a sexual pheromone. The male in flight detects this chemical molecule thanks to its ultra-sensitive antennas. Only the hardiest contender receives the female's favors. He throws his remaining energy into the sexual act, which lasts over an hour. then dies of exhaustion after having left his precious genetic legacy to the next generation. The female now chooses a pine needle suitable for laying her eggs. She will lay over 200 eggs and she will cover them with scales from her belly. A few hours later, the female dies too. She leaves behind a mound of eggs that look convincingly like a pine bud. The female's flight capacity is much lower than the male's, but she can still fly an average of one mile. The female decides where she lays her eggs, and this determines the location of the next generation. So the female's lesser flight capacity limits the speed of expansion north. But the survival of the population she has produced will depend on the weather conditions. Because the caterpillars develop primarily during the winter season, they're highly sensitive to even subtle temperature variations that represent one of the key factors in the progress of this destructive animal. Christelle Robinet is compiling temperature, flight speed, and pine density to establish a statistical model to predict the spread of the caterpillar. Two factors influence the processionary's progress. The first is global warming, and since the early 90s we've observed a rise in the minimum winter temperatures in France. This has helped the processionary to survive the winter and to settle in areas that have become more welcoming in terms of climate. The second factor is the presence of pines. 
On this map, you can see all of the forest zones in France. In certain regions, like the Beauce, there aren't any forests. You would think that this would hinder the caterpillar's progress. If you look along the A10 highway, you'll see that there are plenty of pine trees placed at intervals of up to a mile and a half. The processionary can move from pine to pine and advance even faster than if it were crossing a forest. The processionary moth's exceptional flight capacity enabled it to travel beyond forest zones. But man paved the way. We've planted pine trees, providing the processionary with a supply base. We've also warmed its environment with our emissions of greenhouse gas that have made winter temperatures rise. The processionary now lives among us. Hiding in its nest, it is preparing for a one-way trip 